Hey guys, we are moving this weekend, so it is finally time for a garden tour. It's kind of now or never. Um, I've been putting off garden tour for a long, long time because I've always waited for like the peak season or when something specific was in bloom and then I always missed it. Um, so you guys are gonna see it at kind of a weird time because I've already moved a ton of my concrete and arbors and stuff like that. But you know what, it is what it is. And this is kind of a fun thing for me too because I'll be able to look back and see how my garden looked when we left. So we are starting in the front yard. We actually um, owned two townhouses. We lived in one and rented out the other and we sold those in January and um, we're moving this Saturday. So six of an acre, did I just say that? That's what we live on. It's super tiny. I've had a really hard time. Like I just, I need more space. I need more space for more plants. So um, one of my favorite things up here is the little hedge going up to our front door. These are Concord barberries. And I have, I tried variegated boxwoods there like three years in a row and they all winter killed every single year. So these Concords have been a gem. I love them. And there's a row of like a little drift of Munstead lavender right here, backed by Lady Emma Hamilton roses, David Austin's. And then this, you guys need to Google this tree. It's called a black swan beach. They are super hard to find and I'm super bummed that I'm leaving it behind. It's always the last thing to leaf out in the spring. So I always kind of worry that it's dead, but these it's looking good. And these are super, super dark red leaves, like almost black. And then up here, I've got another drift of Munstead lavender. This whole thing looks gorgeous in the summer. And the uh, lavender is backed by um, Big Sky Sundown Echinacea. So it's got kind of this corally pink behind that lavender. And behind that, I have a big bunch of delphiniums. Um, and of course, these are rose glow barberries. And then I have three grasses. These are all calamagratus. There is an avalanche right here. It's got a white stripe and they get about this tall. And then the two on either side, there's another one over there. These are Eldorado and they've got a yellow stripe, really pretty. Just removed a Fritch blue spruce from this spot. It died. This is not, our soil is so boggy and so wet. It's really tough for evergreens, except for that red tip Norway spruce, which is like loving its life. So maybe if you come over here, you can get a good, kind of idea of what the front yard looks like maybe. I don't know if you can kind of see the lines there. Red point maple, that's what this is. It's an amazing tree and I'm planning on planting a bunch of them at our new house. Okay, so let's go to the side yard. This right here is a Kinsley's Ghost Honeysuckle. Super pretty, great for uh, flower arranging. And I will, I think that the new house actually has one of these, so I'm really excited. And this is the start of the side yard. Um, one piece I haven't moved yet. This one's too heavy for me, so we've got to have some guys. But I have an Arkansas black espaliate apple tree. So this whole pathway, I wanted it to feel kind of secret garden-ish. And this spot has done really well, but I had a couple trees that were suffering toward the end, so it kind of opens up here. Um, but I have a spindle tree, a uh, bunch of irises, and lamium down here. And if you take a look at this pathway, you can see that we, we got started with it. That was three years ago. <laughs> and we never finished the pathway. Please tell me that I am not the only one with projects like that. I kind of feel bad that I'm leaving it like that. So most important thing on this side yard is the evergreen element. So in the winter time, it's actually really pretty out here because I got these lamp posts. These were a gift from Aaron for Christmas one year. He got me two of these, my favorite pieces in my entire yard. But I have 10 green mountain cone boxwoods that kind of line the edges. You can see them. And I usually trim them up pretty tight. So we've got a really, I don't know, a really formal kind of aspect, um, but they look really pretty in the winter time. This is a tricolor beach. This is my pink tree and they, it's truly pink. Beautiful. Kind of scorches in the summer. And this is the only plant I'm actually digging up. I'm going to dig this Japanese maple up. I planted it as a one gallon size. It was like this tall last year and it's already grown. It grew a ton last year. And this is one of my espalier. Uh, this one is a pink lady. And this year I was going to actually have to take it out because check it out. It's got gall. Super huge bummer. Kind of feel guilty that I'm leaving it in here, but kind of not. Okay, and then right here is 
where the arbor was, I just cut all the roses down off of it last night. Um, so it kind of created this really beautiful, I mean, you couldn't even see through here. It was full of Colette climbing roses, which are gorgeous. So all gone now. And then the backyard with my fountain. So this yard, since I work at a nursery, it um, started out with a lot of like the sick and or dying plants um, or smashed, like those plants that came and smashed in the trucks. I brought them home and tried to kind of limp them along. I am not doing that in my new garden because I've wasted a lot of years trying to recoup plants. I don't, I'm not that type of gardener. I want it to look pretty right from the get go. So that's just something I'm gonna do differently. Um, black lace elderberry, fantastic plants. They grow huge every year. Okay, and then back in this corner here, I have a Scarlet Curls Willow, which I love to have because they're great for cutting, for arranging. Um, they get really bright orange stems that are curly, really pretty. This is where my chicken coop was. Um, so I think, I think I took some pictures. They're probably not that great a quality. They were on one of my old cell phones, um, but if they're, if I can find them, we'll flash them up on the screen so you can kind of get an idea of what this spot, spot used to look like. And then a plant that I will grow in my next garden is the Ashleaf Spirea back here. I love the texture of this plant. It comes out really pretty and pink and then it turns to this light chartreuse green. Really, really nice. I like it a lot. Okay. And then in the center garden, it started out with, um, oh, I left my tools out. <laughs> Oops. It started off with four lollipop crab apple trees in every corner in here. And they were gorgeous, beautiful. It looked very formal. Um, we had a really, really bad winter two years ago and it took three of them and then the gopher got the last one. So I uh, started planting David Austin roses last, like late summer. So I, don't, I didn't complete it. I have two Jubilee celebrations right here, three tranquilities, two lady gardeners. Anyway, I was starting to fill it in and I was gonna finish this year if we were still here. So, uh oh, something's wrong with my fountain. Here we go. Nope. Okay, and then back in this corner was where my beehive was. It was back in that, that corner there. So I left this kind of open. I forgot I had tulips. I need to do, I'm hoping in the next couple of evenings, I have a chance to come up here, uh, out here and clean it up a little bit for the new owner. Um, because right about now is when I'll start cutting back the old bulbs and I need to edge the grass. It's looking pretty woolly. That is my number one pet peeve in the yard is grass that is not edged. I do it all the time in my own garden. I like it to be tidy. Okay. So another one, and I don't know, can we come back in here, Erin? I have a Red Lake currant back here that I absolutely adore. I never thought I would like currant so much, but they are like little, they're beautiful in arrangements. In fact, I just made an arrangement with these in it last night, um, but they're just like little red jewels. They're just awesome. And the foliage is beautiful. So I need to have one of those. I need to make a list before we go to our next house of everything that I want. And also right next door, that's where my in-laws live and I'm actually gonna miss it. It was really nice to have them really close by. We're only moving like what, Erin, like a mile down the road is all, but it'll still be, it'll be different. I always felt like comfortable and safe and I don't know, it'll just be weird for a little while. Okay, and then this grass right here, this is a um, mm -hmm, cabaret, miscanthus. Amazing grass. It gets about this tall and it comes out all the way out to here. And I think, actually we did post a picture of this way back, like when we very, very first started our page. So we'll grab that picture and show you. Um, and then a tree peony. Beautiful. I just cut another one of its blooms to go in the arrangement with the red currant. And, oh, oh, I was just, that scared the crap out of me. There's a robin nesting right there. Erin, you should see if you can get in and show the eggs. Did 
you see him? Mm -hmm. That Robin's probably all upset, sad. Another tree I really, really love is this red November maple. They grow um, 18 feet tall and 24 feet wide, so they kind of have like this kind of appearance, and I really like that. And they smell amazing when they're in bloom. And here's our sad looking patio. I just blew it off earlier. It has nothing on it. Last year it was so full. Like so full. We could hardly walk around, huh, Aaron? Yep. Yeah. We used to do videos like this. Like, like this a lot right here. Here's my, this is like a wild woman. This is a lunar mist climbing rose it's going to town. But yeah, we did them right here yeah. and then like right here. Mm -hmm or like occasionally one like this. And we tried all kinds of stuff because we had all kinds of lighting issues. Um, Cause this thing, this patio gets sun until pretty late. So we had like, <laughs> it looks so funny. We had like tarps hung up over the pergola. And then I, I went and got like bug netting material and we had that stapled up there. It looked really bad. <laughs> Glad you guys couldn't see that in the videos. Okay. And then my Niobe clematis, which I cut all the way to the ground every single year, and it comes back with a vengeance. And it gets loaded with blooms. In fact, it's like, it needs a bigger trellis. It's weighting it down. And then my Jack Frost Brennera is, like I've never seen it that big. It's huge. One other sad loss I had two years ago, I had a blood good Japanese maple that was about as tall as the house. You can see I cut it down. It had a trunk like, I don't know, like this big. It was a beautiful, beautiful red Japanese maple. So, I mean, it looks so empty right now. Such a huge bummer when you lose stuff due to winter, but it's coming back. It'll be more kind of a shrub than a tree, but that's okay. It'll still be a really pretty red color, which is really needed in this spot. I don't know. Is there anything else? So yeah, it's just, it's not that big of a garden, but I feel like I got a lot of pretty things packed in here. Um, if I were to do it again, this was actually, it was like a really great practice garden. Um, if I were to do it again, I would definitely section it off into more rooms and not have it be all one flat. Like you can stand here and you can see everything. I think that kind of is sad because I like gardens that have a little bit of mystery where you have to walk around to see different things. And that's what our new house already has going forward a little bit. I'm so excited to show you um, once we get in and get settled down a little bit. Um, but you know, you have to start somewhere and this was my first real garden ever. Um, so it was a great learning experience and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing it. I wish I could show you like every individual plant that I have and tell you what it does. And you know, it makes me so excited such a nerd. So anyway, that is all for tonight. And I hope you enjoyed seeing my garden. What's left of it anyway. Um, we will see you in the next video. Bye.